Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are back with another mods, tools, add-ons and enhancements. We got a couple paywares, a couple freewares, some stuff I think you guys are really going to enjoy so stick around and find out what they are. All right, so the first add-on we're gonna be looking at today is called Pushback Express. Now, Pushback Express sort of brings all of the different pushback add-ons that we've seen thus far in the simulator together, at least all that I've reviewed on this channel. You get everything from the jetway control to baggage and catering and lights and stairs and fuel, um, but it also brings in voice control. You can actually use your microphone to control all the steps. You can use your rudder pedals to control the tug. You can use your flight stick to control the speed of the tug. Um, and then on top of that, you also get audio from the pushback tug itself and a bit more. So let's take a look at some of the settings here. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your output device to the desired device. You can do an audio test here, just audio to confirm. Audio test complete. Here on the language options, you can change your pilot or ground crew accents, so based on, or their language, based on where you are flying to and flying from. So if you're a US pilot flying into Europe, you may wanna change the ground crew you know, to Europe or flying out of Europe, I should say. Um, and then you have your general tips here and settings. Now, real quick, tool tips, when it says show two tips here, tool tips, that's going to be up here on the action bars. And then show usage tips are gonna be the big giant black screen that pops up and then gives you some information. I turn those off as I feel like they're major immersion breakers, but I get why they're there. Um, you have your pushback options down here, your distance options if you guys choose to. This will be total distance that the uh, aircraft is pushed back away from the gate, and then also whether or not it's executing a you know left turn, right turn, or straight back. Um, and then you can actually use the ailerons to initiate the final turn. Um, that's pretty handy. So I imagine that means it will push back straight until you use your ailerons and then engages the turn. Um, much like the rudder pedals do when you set it to rudder control, which is what I've got here. And we'll take a look at that. Um, and then you have a few more options down here. The one I want you guys to be aware of is the push to talk hotkey is currently set to C. Uh, just be cautious of that as the C key is also for this particular external view. Notice I don't have all the gauges and everything. The camera view, the drone view, excuse me. If you hit C, you um, enable the aircraft controls. So just keep that in mind. And that's a really cool shot of an A380 coming out of there in the back. Anyway, although he's not in the taxi way, it looks like he's about to take out that fuel truck. Someone should tell him. All right, so we can properly demonstrate this. I've gone ahead and reset the aircraft here. So let's go ahead and there's our jetway. Our aircraft main door. We're obviously not going to need the stairs, but we can get the power supply truck. There's a catering truck and luggage. So from this point, we could obviously just walk through the rest of our startup process if we had anything going here. Now I am not worried about uh, flight planning or anything like that today. You can see our door page is open properly. So at this point, we'll let the process complete and then we'll look at completing the pushback. So everybody should be done with their processes at this point. Now let's go ahead and clear luggage and catering. Actually just me or did I just bring him back around? I totally just brought them back around. Huh. All right. Well, that's actually kind of cool because I always think they don't last long enough. Okay, so he's gonna take out our engine. Anyway, so let's see what happens when we start the pushback interface. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We'll be ready to taxi shortly. Oh, 
We will be ready shortly. Roger. Nice, there we go. So that clears everybody. All right, now we definitely want to make sure right here, wait for Tug to connect before speaking. So we're going to make sure he hooks up. Let me start a few things here, get the engines ready here. APU's already on. We can disconnect the external power. Start setting the APU bleed for engine start. Beacon's already set. Seatbelt signs, no portable devices. I think he's ready for us. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes, please. Brakes, re brakes released. Pushing back. There it goes. Are we clear to start engines one and two? Are we clear to start engines one and two? You are clear to start engine one and two. All right, so it's engine two coming on. And then now I'm gonna use my rudder pedals to start steering us. Oh, and I'm steering us the wrong way. There we go. And this is totally up to you again. You can do a number of different methods to do so. Missed that taxiway by a mile, but that's all right. Just demoing here. Stop pushback. Oh, have to hit the button. Stop pushback. Pushback complete. Set parking brakes, please. Parking brakes are set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right-hand side with the pin. Thanks, and you can disconnect. Clear to disconnect. Thanks. Have a good flight. See you later. And then from this point, the app will actually automatically close down. I'm not sure why it's telling me to turn off my engines, but. So just like any new piece of software, I'm sure it's got its bugs. It's the first release of it, so we'll be keeping an eye on this one. Um, I am going to be using this one very heavily moving forward. Um, I want to see how it develops, um, and for 20 US dollars, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, um, especially when they get everything ironed out, and there may be a few settings that I can still tweak. Um, I definitely want to be trying out the uh, pre-planned, essentially, you know, the uh, distance settings. Um, and seeing what those kind of pushbacks are like. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys are feeling about this one. Again, there's a couple issues here and there, but, uh, you know, everything resolves with time. So let's go ahead and move on to our next payware for today. All right, for our next add-on, we're going to be taking a look at something new from our team over at Rex. They have released a new texture package for all the global airports, basically retexturing the taxiways, runways, and surrounding environment um, to look more realistic and give us more of that uh, airport look and usage, if you will. So let's go ahead and sort of soak in the site that we're seeing here. This is the default scenery, absolutely no adjustments whatsoever. We're sitting here at Los Angeles, California. Um, forgive the stuttering, I'm not sure what's going on. This is the first I've seen this since I've been back in this area since the new install, but it is definitely framing pretty bad. Now, one of the other things that actually I just thought about is I'm wondering if that VR issue that I discovered before is happening, but that's irrelevant. So, again, taking a look at the runways, notice that they are rather clean, not much wear and tear. Um, we got a little bit back there, but uh, nothing that really makes it look like a dirty, heavily used international hub. All right, so just sort of focus on that. 
the texturing on the taxiways looks a little dry in the coloring. Um, and now let's go ahead and see what everything looks like with the adjustment. All right, so as we can see here, there is a massive difference with the new modification. You can see the oil stains and tire stains down on the ground. The runway and taxiways look much more heavily used and worn. Now there is also an option when doing the installation to have it set for everything to be clean. So you have a clean and then you have the more used and abused texturing. I'm using obviously the used look. I think it's more realistic. Um, kind of wondering what that aircraft's doing down there because there's no way he landed in five feet, but what the heck. Um, but <laughs> anyways, you guys can see it brings a lot of life and to me both sound and scenery are just as critical to the immersion as the aircrafts themselves you know if you know it looks like you're rolling out on a brand new runway well that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense especially when you're coming out of an international hub like lax so anyway as always guys let me know what you guys think down in the comments below how you feel about this particular modification links down in the description again i believe this is 15.95 is what i paid for it um, so, uh, let me know how you guys feel about it. All right. And for our next add on, we have another one from ambitious pilot, same developer who brought us the toolbar pushback and he has brought us this. If you hit shift and Z Zulu on your keyboard, you get this first data line that brings up our latitude, longitude, altitude, according to sea level, our magnetic heading, our knots indicated airspeed as well as the wind speed and direction. If we hit shift Z yet again, we get our frame rate, we get our um, current G's against the aircraft, fuel, um, I have an, oh, that's just the VR. And we also get our sim rate. And if we hit it one more time, we get the whole shebang. And then once more, it will actually disable it. Now I am thinking I have shift Z bound to something. So let's find out if that's something we're going to want to be paying attention to. So we're going to come over to keyboard for a second and shift and Z. Oh, I don't think we're under keyboard. Let's do that again and shift Z and well, should just be the autopilot which shouldn't be quite right because that's shift alt and Z. But anyway, so we're going to want to be paying attention to any key bindings because it's definitely triggering something. And I think it's triggering the autopilot off, even though I have alt selected. So I'll probably have to change that particular key bind uh, to something else. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and clear that. Let's validate that. There we go. And I think I'm going to go ahead and clear this one as well. That way we don't have any more headaches there because it was definitely triggering something that still sounds like it's doing something every time I tap it same so we're gonna have to dig into that a little bit deeper and find out what's going on there but either way very very cool handy add-on no more going into the developer mode to get your frame rate um, and that makes a huge difference because the developer mode, as handy as it is, it's A, a pain to get to. B, I feel like it's invasive to the screen as you get that toolbar across the top. And I know I believe the toolbar can be disabled, but again, it's just extra steps. And this provides us with much, much more information, which is very handy. The only thing I would like to add on the wish list. Yeah, this is a, it's turning on the uh, autopilot mode. Um, yep. Which is very odd because I just cleared the keyboard command. But anyway. I digress. So watch for your keyboard commands. Um, the only thing, like I said, if I could add on the wish list would be the current altimeter setting, but I don't know if that's even an option, but that would be kind of cool to be able to just throw that up with a quick toolbar be able to get what you need and move on if you weren't using something like ATC or live weather to figure it out. But that's just a wish list. Hope you're listening, ambitious pilot. And uh, um, let's go ahead and move on to our next segment. All right, I figured I'd show you guys this real quick. Even though I was hitting Shift and Z, I figured out what's going on. It's activating the autopilot, thinking even though I have Alt and Z bound. So Shift and Z and Alt and Z are being recognized as the same keyboard within the simulator. Either that or it's using the autopilot master. One or the other here is what's happening. So I'm actually guessing it's probably the autopilot master. 
So even though, again, we're using a keyboard combination with a or a keyboard command with a modifier, even it, it's still triggering the autopilot. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, that's something that's going to have to be changed um, if we're going to use these current keyboard commands. That might be something that maybe we can go into and adjust the keyboard command with inside the application. But if we come back into it real quick, it shouldn't continue to trigger. So there, there. That's exactly what was happening. So just a quick uh, update on something that you'll want to be aware of if you start using this add-on. Next on our list, we have the Community Downloader has been updated to offer a few new aircraft. We have the Cessna 208, the Cessna 182, this is by um, uh, Coronado, and the TBM 930 by Mix Mugs has been added as well. So, very handy, uh, makes it much, much easier and much more simple to install some of these add-ons and uh, hopefully keep them up to date. So you guys uh, definitely jump on this one because anything that we can do to save bouncing back between directories and whatnot is definitely going to be worth it. Now he's also added the ability to add um, JSON files and um, package directories, um, but I haven't gone into how to set that up yet. That's something that I will be exploring at a future date and will definitely be doing a video on. But uh, this is definitely a very awesome tool that I highly recommend that you guys grab. As always, links down in the description below. All right, so the next one I wanted to show you guys was something I thought was really neat, and that is a 3D print for the Thrustmaster Warthog throttles um, for some flight detents. We have the A320 and CJ4 that automatically come with it, but uh, this is a really nice addition if you have these particular th or this particular throttle and access to a 3D printer. Now, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, I do want you guys to know that you can simply Google uh, 3D printing services, and there are websites you can go to where you submit your print form, and for you know nominal fee based on what it is that you're printing, they'll print it for you and ship it to you. But for those of you who already have 3D uh, printers, this is a really awesome. Um, piece that you can print and add to your throttles um, on the Thrustmaster Warthog and give you some setting details. I imagine we have idle and we're either climb or toga, I would imagine, but uh, we'd have to look and see what the actual prints are. Let me see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. It doesn't really say what the settings are per the aircraft. Um, oh, it looks like right here, 14, 23.5 and 68% it looks like. Or degrees um, but anyways so I just wanted to show that to you guys real quick and uh, see if that was something that you guys were interested in I know I'll definitely be testing these out with my printer and I'll let you guys know what comes back but it'll probably be a few days before I get to this particular portion all right let's go ahead and move on to the next all right and the final period where mod we're gonna be looking at today is for the Cessna 208 Bravo now this is an aircraft I think I've only sat in one time ever and I just wasn't impressed enough with it where I really ever wanted to get into it again. It's one of the default aircraft, and you guys know how most of the default aircraft have been. Um, and unfortunately, that's, that's not meant to be a bad shot at a Sobo. It's just the reality that they're, they're lacking in features, they're lacking in functionality, they're lacking in flight model performance, right? <clears throat> so we have a new mod that is now available, much uh, very similar to what we saw with the TBM 930. Um, for the Grand Caravan, and here it is here. Here it is here? Yeah, anyway. So, came out on the 14th here, and we have our developer up here at the top. Looks like a development team, done a fantastic job. It's always nice to see the teamwork come together, and you always know that you're gonna get a ton of performance when you see that. And here is a snapshot of the changes that have been made available here. Now, there is a couple steps to making the G1000 function properly, which they walk through the installation process down here. Make sure you guys follow this very, very closely. Um, read this step by step. It's not as, sim as simple as a drag and drop process. I have not gone through the G1000 update yet, um, but that's something I'm definitely going to be doing. I just happen to see this and I'm more interested in this stuff here. So we have a um, engine flight model based on vanilla sim update four, uh, corrected different values according to the pilot's operating handbook. Um, again, ground handling update, more control while taxing, tighter turning cycle or circle, excuse me, which is fantastic. The turn radius in the default aircraft is terrible. 
Um, when it takes you three lanes to turn a Cessna 172, that's BS. <laughs> um, anyway, um, added CAS enunciation system page, improved engine readouts. Now, I believe it's the enunciations uh, that you have to make a modification in order for them to function properly. There are two files that get downloaded with this particular mod. One of them just goes to the community folder. That's the aircraft mod itself. And then the other one is for the G1000 to function properly. Um, let's see here. We have a reversionary mode. We have yaw damper working autopilot instrument fixes, more accurate startup, improved lighting, uh, thanks to UI, um, which is a fantastic light mod. Um, I have all of his light mods that are available. They are my light mods. I don't know if it's him or her. I would assume him, um, which is dangerous. I shouldn't be assuming anything and improved textures. So, I mean, this, this is great. This is exactly the kind of, um, performance that I look for in these mods. These are, these are ones that excite me. So let's go ahead and take a look at the aircraft itself. Um, again, I am not familiar with this aircraft. So again, I sat in it once before and just was never impressed. So I've got a quick checklist here that I'm going to be using to sort of try to get us through some things. Um, so let's see if I can get us around really quick. Um, most everything should be pretty simplistic. Now this is a turboprop, right? So let's see here. We got that. There's our mixture. Good. Uh, let's see here. And that's power. That's emergency power. Okay. So we got throttle prop mixture. Good. And then we need fuel tanks selected to both. I would assume it is way down there. That's what it looks like. Nope. And it's not a fuel tank handle. Uh, let's see. Where's our fuel selector at? I won't spend too much time. Looking for it. Either I find it quickly or I won't. In which case, we'll just have to hope that we're set and ready. Um, I am excited to really try this one out, so I don't want to spend too much time. I doubt the fuel tanks are going to be up there. Although, we do have some. We have our oxygen. Oh, fuel tank selectors. So, let's see here. How do we... I'll be down. Here I am saying I didn't think it was going to be up here. That's exactly where it was. All right, so fuel tanks are selected to both. Let me come back over here and let's start moving down the line here. Parking brake is set. I did see the parking brake lever right down here. It is pulled. Power levels are at idle RPM set to max. RPM is set at max. Fuel mixture or fuel condition lever uh, needs to be set at the cutoff. Fuel shutoff knob check full in. I would imagine that, yep, fuel shut off knob, yep, fuel in, there we go. Um, wing flaps handle are in the up pos position. Wing, where's our flaps handle? Do, 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 let's lock. Where's our flaps, where's our flaps, where's our flaps? Flaps, where are you? That's, take, uh, that's our trim wheel. Is that flaps right over here? Yep, wing flaps all the way up in the full position. They are retracted. All right, uh, moving on. So we have battery switch into the on position. There's battery. Passenger signs as required. Seatbelt signs on, no smoking signs on. We'll turn the cabin lights on. It's a little dark back there. And we have nav lights on and beacon light on. Nav on, beacon on. Avionics switch number one to the on position. Starter switch to the start position. Let's see, do we need to turn on the Garmin? Nope, we're good. So starter switch. Oh, it's got, they must have meant, well, that's fuel boost pump, so that can't be right. Hmm. Anyway, I guess I'll keep moving forward. Uh, so what do we got here? That's fuel boost. Oh, fuel boost, boost pitch, switch to on. Gosh, I can't talk. And here's our starter. Starter switch, start. Prop coming alive, fuel condition lever to low idle. I can't move the fuel condition lever. I can move the mixture. Is that what that is? Hang on, that might not be a mixture, that might be the fuel condition. Oh, it is condition, my bad. All right, so let's move that forward. There's low idle. Fuel boost pump to the norm position. Okay, back in the norm position. Avionics number two switch on. And it looks like that is our startup process.
Very cool. Let me reset my view here. I'm sort of all over the place now. Okay. And let's see what we got here for the lights here. Let's turn on our, what do we got here? Lights, recog lights on, strobe light on. Well, no, strobe light shouldn't be on just yet. Never mind, disregard that. Power outlets, all cool. You <laughs> need. All right. Um, all right, so where, we're definitely gonna need some anti-ice, obviously. Let's just turn that on now. We got the rain, nasty weather out there. Stall heat on, wing lights. I'm not worried about flood control. What about a taxi light? Oh, lights, taxi lights, recog on. Okay, cool. All right, we're good there. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go take a little spin here. Oop! If I don't kick my rudders around, that's exactly what that sound was. All right, and the flaps lever. Oh, takeoff. Oh, right there. Whoa, she's getting moving. It's moving. <laughs> it turns beautifully. This isn't improved ground handling. This is great ground handling. Like the input on the rudder actually makes sense. All right, getting close here to our take point. So let's get our transponder turned on. We're just in a VFR flight. We are not in the United States, so 7,000 is where we need to be for this region. I think I picked South America, but don't quote me on that. I honestly don't remember where I picked. Here, you know what? Let's find out where we are. Not in use. Well, oh, there we go. That's where we are. Sometimes I do that, guys. Literally, I just pick a random spot. I just literally go to the globe and zoom in on one location, and off we go. All right, so we have pitot heat on. We have stall heat on. Anti-ice is set as, oh, bypass if icing can occur or on runways with loose surfaces, otherwise normal. Not sure what that did. Bypass pull, normal push. Gotcha. There we go. For those of you who don't know, what the inertial separator does is it basically creates a second duct. Um, it's the, well, it doesn't create a second duct. It opens a duct. Um, now you lose some horsepower in the process of turning on the inertial separator, but what it does is any debris that gets sucked into the intake, it bypasses the engines that we don't destroy your engine in the process um and uh collects it i think it either collects it or shoots it out the back i think i can't remember what the uh, what the catch there is um but uh anyway so anytime you're in icing conditions clouds things like that or you're taxi on the ground whatever it may be you want to make sure that you have your um inertial separator turned on all right so checking for traffic let's bring our view down a little bit we do have live traffic turned on. That is a terrible view. Uh, looks like everything's clear out here. I'm gonna bring that back up. Landing lights turned on. Strobe light now on. Got the transponder set. Let's go ahead and take our runway. Initial separators in the normal operation as designated by our checklist. We are to line up. Slowly set to take off power. Max 2400 foot pounds of torque. We're going to be slowly rotating at 70 to 80 knots, depend, uh, depending on weight. Pitch 10 degrees on the initial climb to night with 90 knots. At 500 feet, we'll start to accelerate to 110 knots, 120 knots. Retract flaps at a minimum of 95 knots indicated. So here we go. We're just going to take the runaway and get her rolling. So let's see here. Looking for 2,400 foot-pounds of torque. She's heavy. She's heavy on the power. I can't see if that what that says. I think that's 2,000. That is 2,000. That's all we're getting there. Whoa, baby. 
Got 50 knots indicated. 60 knots indicated. 70 knots indicated. And there's our rotation, slowly rotating, climbing 10 degrees. Gear up. Wait, she doesn't have a retractable gear, does she? I don't think it does. That would make sense. I don't, I don't remember seeing one. I'm going to go ahead and bring the flaps up. I know it says minimum 90 knots, but we are not accelerating. But you know what I did not do? There it goes. It's slowly accelerating. Let me check something real quick. I didn't see anything in the checklist on this, but I'm sort of wondering about something. So let's do flight directors, autopilot, yaw damper. Let's do a heading tap, do a heading hold. Just let her continue to climb for a minute. All right, so we're in flight idle. I wanted to make sure I got that. I couldn't remember if we got that or not. Um, I think that's it. Very cool. Wow, it's actually really pretty. So I actually really enjoyed that rollout. I really enjoyed that. It was a, it was a long takeoff and probably a little longer, but I don't know how much of that was my fault. Um, that absolutely could have been the case. I mean, there's never any telling. Let's go ahead and lock the altitude in here. I think that's good. Very awesome. And let's, uh, let's just start turning the uh, quick bank around here. Let's see what else it could have been here. What am I looking for? PFD, wind, option three. More, uh, so we had a crosswind. Now we're turning into the wind. Now, we should not be turning off the initial separate at this point, but let's do it and see what we get. We should see an increase in RPM pretty dramatically, and we are. Not as dramatic as I was expecting, but not too bad either. There's our lights, instruments. Nice. I love the lighting. The lighting is great. Turn our taxi lights off, I think. Do we have to leave those on? I don't think we leave those on. Oh. Very cool. Although I think we're about to crash. Yeah, we totally are. Apparently I bumped a button. Yeah. Yeah, you're mad at me, I know. Although, why are we trying to turn so bad? Stop it. Doesn't give you autopilot. Give him control of my plane back. Anyways, guys. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I highly recommend you give this aircraft a shot. I'm really impressed with it compared to the last time I flew it. I love all the functionality into it. The performance of it. The textures look absolutely fantastic compared to the default. The lighting looks great. I, I really think this is going to be an aircraft we're going to be flying more on this channel. So, uh, again, test it out. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, folks, I will see you in the next one.